Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the recently reboxed Supermarine Seafire. This kit was tooled about 10 years ago, so let's see what it has to offer. So as per most kits these days, we're going to be starting off in the cockpit. As you can see on screen, I'm going to be mainly focusing here on the forward facing instrument panel. I'm populating it with one or two parts, as the main instrument panel itself is actually moulded as one singular part. Moving on to have a look at a different sub-assembly here, I'm having a look at the control stick and then also the rudder pedals. It's good to note that there is some absolutely superb moulded detail on the control stick itself and also on the instrument panel. Airfix made the detail in the cockpit to such a standard that they thought it negated the use of any decals on the instrument panel or on any other sidewalls, which is quite an interesting idea. Moving on now to have a look at the final sub-assembly for the cockpit, and that is the seat. Everything goes together so quickly and so perfectly that you're really on to paint within a matter of hours, which is really impressive. And speaking of paint, the first paint that's going to be used in this build is going to be Tamiya's XF71. It is their cockpit green colour and I'm pretty sure it's probably the most popular cockpit green on the market. This is sprayed down using my Hardwing Steenbeck Evolution at around about 15 and 16 psi. Once I was happy that my cockpit green had fully dried, I can then get out some masking tape and start to mask off the top half of the cockpit. So interestingly, the top half of the cockpit is actually going to be sprayed in a flat black colour and that is really because pilots were complaining that there were some weird reflections going on in the cockpit because of the bubble canopy that the sea fire has. So the flat black was intended to hopefully get rid of any annoying or distracting reflections, which I thought was quite cool. So the flat black which I'm personally using here is Mr. Colors H12. It goes down really nicely and has really good coverage so you can get that really nice deep black colour. So after I had my two base colours, I could then go on to do some detail painting. To do this, I used a variety of metallic colours, so that is the silvers, the brasses, and one or two aluminium colours. And also some reds and some whites to pick out one or two switches and gauges. So as I previously mentioned, there was no instrument decal provided in this kit, but that isn't the end of the world. What I did is I got out an AK weathering pencil, I believe this is their rubber colour, and then I pretty much just drew and kind of scribbled over these raised details to highlight them. It worked a treat and it's a much quicker method than trying to individually paint each dial and I think it has a similar effect. So I can now start to bring some of these completed sub-assemblies together. Here you can see me bringing the rudder and the control stick and the instrument panel all together. It's quite a tight fit and uh, it is quite a flimsy part. So what I'd potentially recommend doing is scraping off a little bit of material on the connection point just to have a little bit of a looser fit. But, you know, I'd rather have a slightly looser fit than breaking apart. The sub-assembly can now be cemented into one side of the fuselage. There's some really nice notches which ensure that you get the right placement of this sub-assembly. I can now attach the seat sub-assembly to the rear bulkhead and this slots on very nicely. It always has this indented rectangular which slots in and gives you a really nice secure fit. This then goes alongside the other sub-assembly in the right half of the fuselage, once again with no fitment issues. So the instructions do note that you should now fit the propeller uh, assembly. I personally didn't want to do that as I thought it would definitely get in the way of any of my um, painting and I'd probably break something. So what I did is I modified this part and pretty much just snipped off the end of it, which meant that I could later on slip the propeller onto it. Once that done, I uh, cemented the stopper onto the end of it and cemented it in place. This did work out well, so if you don't want to uh, put the propeller in place at this point of the build, I'd copy what I did. With my little modification out of the way, I can then cement the two fuselage halves together. On the whole, a really good fit here. I had one issue at the front of the nose section, as you can see there. I believe that might be because I didn't put one of the, uh, the instrument panel at an exact 90 degrees. So I think it kind of pushed it out a little bit, if you know what I mean. However, it's nothing that a little bit of a, a super glue can't sort out later on. I can now cement the two halves together, and then I can look at going onto the wings. On screen you can see me fitting the identification lights to the underside of the wing and then I'm fitting the upper surfaces to the lower surfaces of the wings. These have a really nice fit. The only thing that needs to be sorted out of course is that leading edge seam. However, I'm pretty sure every single kit needs that to be sorted out so not a real surprise there. The wings are then cemented to the main fuselage assembly and actually have a really nice join. I didn't need to use any filler here for the fuselage to wing seam, which is quite good as that can usually cause a bit of a headache. 
I can now cement the chin of the aircraft as per se, which once again has nice fitment. So on to another sub-assembly, this time it is the under chin intake. The one issue that I had with this was there was a seam which was really annoying me on the inside of the little intake and oh, I just I just couldn't sort it out and I, I was I was very upset because it really stands out. You know when you find an issue on your model and you just, you, maybe no one else sees it but it's there for you and you just can't get it away and it really, really annoyed me. Moving on to have a look at these radiators, um, when I first tried to put them in, it wouldn't go in, I was like, what have I done here? And I'd put these two pieces in the wrong way, so read the instructions, don't be a melon like myself. And once I had them in the right uh, position, it went in no problem at all. So a minor improvement that I wanted to make for this kit was on the exhaust stacks. Uh, they were just tubes at that current point in time, and I thought at 48th scale, that's going to be noticeable. So what I did is I got uh, my Dremel out with a very, very small little drill bit and started to kind of hollow out the inside of it. This was quite a delicate process to say the least, uh, but what I first did was pretty much drill a pilot hole and then I will come back and do what I'm going to call the Mac model hand wiggle and it pretty much is just a little wiggle with my hand and it hollows out the rest of it. Um, so yeah, that is now trademarked technique by myself. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's a really simple little improvement that you can do and it does actually elevate the appearance more than you'd expect. So definitely give it a try on your next model. There was the final result, much better than what it first looked like, as you can see. So moving on back to some less major modifications, we're now just going to be installing the horizontal stabilizers onto the back. They have a really nice big tab, which ensures that you get the correct angle and also means that you get some good attachment points. Moving on now to secure the elevator and also the ailerons in place, I opted to actually do a little bit of angle with my ailerons. So one side is slightly up and the other one is slightly dipped. This just gives a little bit of life to the wing and let's say the control column has been slightly, you know, off to the side to give it a little bit of movement. Don't know how accurate it is, but you know, I enjoy doing little things like that. The cannons can then be secured in place along with the rear tail hook. It's good to note that you cannot use this rear tail hook. I had to actually rip this out and uh, use the one in the stowed position. And that is just because the when it's in the extended position, it will probably get bent or broken off if you're having this model with its gear out and sitting on a platform. You can only have the tail hook extended if you're going to be displaying this in flight. So read the instruction, guys. On screen, you can now see me installing the flaps. The flaps have these really nice 90 degree kind of molded angles which slot into the wing. So really nice attachment points. Flaps can sometimes be quite a weak or you know not a great place to kind of get attachment points onto on a model. Uh, the Airfix have a really nice system here and I, I really enjoyed putting them together. Now we're going to be populating the underside of the wings with a couple of fuel tanks, etc, etc. You could also put rockets on there if you wanted to. However, I didn't think the rockets looked the best in this kit, so I instead opted for the tanks. So the next thing that I can now start to look at is the glass for this kit. The Seafire has, I believe, this is a reinforced glass plate at the front. If I was you, I personally would not put this on the kit purely because you run such a high risk of frosting and unfortunately, I did uh, succumb to a little bit of frosting. I tried to hide this by doing a slightly uh, blue tint on it. It didn't really work. If anything, it made it worse. So maybe just leave that part out, but that's up to you. I can then do my first bit of priming for this build and that is going to be using Mr. Hobby's 1500 a Surfacer Black. As you saw in the clip, it did in fact highlight um, one or two seams which has to be sorted out. This would actually come back to bite me again as it became a ghost seam, but as you'll see, I had a bit of time to sort that out. The canopy can be cemented on, definitely doesn't have the best fit, it's good to note, and then I can go on to do some painting. So this part of the build is sped up because this did not go right. I, I spent about one or two days trying to do scheme C in the kit, which you can see on the screen now. And as you can see, it's very, very specific colors. You know, that green slaty color. I just tried so hard to replicate it and I, and I physically couldn't. I tried to post shade it, alter the color of it and nothing looked right. Every time I finished it or, or did some different technique to it, it did not look how I wanted it to look. 
you'll see on screen that I go through many, many different attempts to try and sort it out, whether that be through lightening it, through some post-shading techniques, and then even going back, remixing the paint and actually making it darker again. And I just couldn't get it right. I have no clue why it wasn't working. I think it was a mixture between the dark sea gray wasn't the best color and then it didn't suit it correctly and then the actual green color just didn't look right as well so i yeah i i kind of had to abandon scheme c unfortunately uh because look I, I was just getting very very annoyed i was like what is happening so in a night i tried to then repaint it and go on to scheme um a and midway through scheme a you'll see that there's this big a finger smudge print on it and pretty much a fly kamikaze into the side of my aircraft and I had to wipe it off and I was like oh my goodness let's just go back to the start and try again so 1500 black came out again and then we could start the actual painting process we're going to be starting off using Mr. Color 368 which is a sky type S sort of color this is sprayed down at around about 15 psi and thinned in a ratio of about 30 percent paint to 70 percent thinner as sky type S is quite a light color I like to take my time building up the actual paint thickness so lots of thin little coats gradually built up gave me the best result. So over my past couple of builds you might have noticed but I've been doing a couple of different painting techniques using different products different paints etc etc and really that's down to the guys down at Hannans. They've been giving me some really good tips on how to use the Mr. Hobby paints, how to thin them properly, what pressures to spray out, etc, etc. And I've really seen a difference in the quality of my builds. So if you are in the London area, be sure to definitely check them out. They're right next to the RAF Hender Museum, so it definitely works out for a really nice day out. And also gives you an excuse to get another project. Turning our focus back to what's on screen, here you can see that I've masked off the areas which are going to be sprayed in SMS's Extra Dark Sea Grey. So I think... Many people will agree that this SMS color is potentially a little bit too bluey for an extra dark sea gray. A couple more drops of gray would have probably been more appropriate. So I'm interested if you have sprayed an extra dark sea gray before, what brand did you use? What was the color like and would you recommend it? I'm just looking forward to potentially doing the gannet in a couple of weeks and potentially trying to get a little bit more accurate of a paint color. So now that my base colours are down, I can now mask off a couple other elements and start to spray them to really start to bring this thing to life. That includes the flaps, which are going to be in that interior green colour again, along with the white tail that Scheme A has, and also the walkways. It's good to note that Airfix do in fact provide decals for the walkways. However, because I just love masking so much, I thought it would be a good idea to try and mask them off. This did result in about an hour's worth of masking to try to get the right thickness, however, it's better than having no silvering. Other elements which can be masked and also painted up are going to be the iconic red nose of this Scheme A, along with the gear bays, the wheel wells, and also one or two other elements. These can all be fitted on later. But right now, I'm going to be fitting in those recently modified exhaust stacks. I think I might have gone for a little bit too shiny of an aluminium color or metallic color here for the stacks. Um, I tried to sort it out with a wash later. However, there was no chance I was dulling that aluminium color. Here you can see how that modification earlier on worked and allowed me to fit the propeller just that little bit later. Once everything had now been painted, I can now seal all of my hard work in using Mr. Color GX100 Gloss Varnish. This gave me a good base for doing all the decals. The decals are your normal Airfix quality, they're absolutely brilliant, and I used Ammo Mig's Set and Soul solution to get everything to conform into all of the details. Once that was done, I can now re reseal sorry, all of the decals using another coat of Mr. GX100 before going on to the weathering process. I really did get out all of my weathering items for this thing and I was very, very excited with an enthusiastic thumbs up. The first thing that I was going to do was use this PRW Black Knight wash to highlight all of those panel lines. After giving the wash about 10-15 minutes to completely dry off, I'm going to be using some tissue paper and wiping it off in the direction of airflow. This gets rid of any excess wash and then gives me a nice base to do some more oil rendering. Before I use the oils, I actually want to get rid of this super gloss finish and to do that I use Mr. Hobby's uh, super clear spray can and this is the matte. So instead of having a gloss varnish, it actually brings it down to this sort of semi-gloss. It then allows the oils to grip onto the surface just that little bit better. Firstly, to create some highlights, I'm going to be using this dust color. 
it is stippled very small amounts at the forward portions of the panels and then I'm going to be using a completely dry brush and blending and fading it back in. This just gives a slightly lighter region of that sky type S color at the forward portions of the panel and gives it a nice bit of panel variation helping you to differentiate each and every individual panel. I can now continue this process but now on the wings and I'm also not using that dust colour anymore and in fact a light grey. This light grey isn't really a grey colour, it's more of like a very very light or baby blue colour and I really just continued the exact same effect. However this time I had a little bit of issue with the oil gripping a little bit too much so to counteract this I have a second brush which is diluted or dampened as per se with a little bit of white spirit which just eases up that oil and allows me to fade it into that panel once again in the direction of airflow and from front to back. I found that blending the oil in thoroughly really helped to sell the effect as it improved uh, the length of the gradient and made it a little bit more believable. So my tips for this is uh, take your time, use white spirit if you need to and don't be afraid to just completely start over. One or two panels I completely wiped off and just restarted because I thought I'd just gone a little bit too over the top with the effect and it didn't look very believable anymore. Now that I have my faded and highlight regions all sorted out, I'm going to be using AK's weathering pencils again, firstly using sepia and then I'll build it up using black colours to deepen the effect. What I'm going to do is instead of using the uh, highlights at the front of the panels, I'm now going to deepen the back of the panels using this sepia and I'm kind of doing little L shapes at the back of each panel. The thing is with the AK pen and pencils is it looks really really harsh and you know like I've just scribbled on a model so it's quite scary to do. However these are pretty much just watercolours so what I then can do is come in using a dampened cotton bud and then blend the effect in. This is actually my first time using AK weathering pencils on a build but I really think after this build that they're going to be a really essential piece of my weathering lineup equipment as per se. I just think they're such a diverse and unique bit of kit and I really enjoy using them. Once I've done that initial kind of dirty grimy effect with the uh, sepia I can now deepen and darken these panels just using a straight black. The, exact, the effect is the exact same however this time I try to really deepen and maybe not uh, blend them in as much to ensure that you really see that area of shadow or darkness at the back of the panel. And then really the final part of this build is going to be using ammo shaders. I've been using shaders quite a lot in the recent builds. I just, I, I really enjoy using them and I love the effect that they give. For this particular one, I'm going to be using the navy gray color. I know it says gray, but when you actually spray it down, it's more of quite this darkish blue as you can see on screen. I'm going to actually concentrate this along the panel lines just to give areas of kind of shaded along. It, it, it gives quite a similar effect to if I was to pre-shade or post shade along the panel lines but it does it more subtly and more how I personally like it. I do this over the entire model and I also use it on the white tail just to kind of break up that monotone colour. Now the colours that you see on screen are the colours that I used and mixed in quite an equal ratio to be honest with you to then be airbrushed onto the model to replicate the exhaust. Do keep in mind that those paints were really really heavily diluted. So a minor cock up which I had was I broke off the tail wheel and then couldn't find it. So with parts that I had lying around I had to form this new tail wheel. It's incredibly fat so I don't think it's very accurate however if you just ignore it it'll be fine. I was very kindly gifted a new set of tweezers as my old tweezers were apparently uh, looking like witch's fingers or toes or something so I, I was very happy to receive them and they worked absolutely great for demasking the cockpit. And really with everything demasked that was this build finished so I really enjoyed this one I think it is potentially my best weathering job to date uh, very subtly and I really enjoyed it. So let me know what you think enjoy the final photos and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.